What's going on, everybody? It's your big brother, K Reno. And once again, y'all are tuned in to K Reno Radio right here on YouTube. And I have a super, super special guest with me today. I'm so honored to have this queen with us. She is one of the most versatile vocalists that I have ever heard. She has worked with the likes of some of the greats that have ever graced the industry from Shaka Khan and Layla Hathaway to Nita Baker. I saw Michael Bolton name on the list. It's just, <laughs> it's just, she's the real deal. Um, she's appeared on American Idol, The Voice, um, Lion King, the live action film. This, this woman is so accomplished and I'm honored to have her on there. Introducing the song and presenting to others, the one and only, Miss Tony Scruggs, how you doing, Queen? I'm doing great. How are you, my dear? If I complain, just slap me. I'm I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm, I have no complaints at all. <laughs> just honored to have you here. We we want to get right into it. Um, when did you? When did your musical journey start? When did you just notice that you had this gift? And what made you just start on that road with your singing talent? You know what? My family did before I did. Um, my family, I come from a long line of singers back probably four generations, um, back to my great, great, great grandparents, playing keys, playing keys. Back then it was just the piano, playing the piano, <laughs> singing. And every generation, I guess, I don't know if they taught their kids to sing or we all just kind of had the ability. So I was singing before I even knew it was happening. I just kind of looked up, I was like, oh, this is what we do now? Oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine, I guess. So my mother had us learning music. Um, you know, we, we, they had music all around us all, you know, all the time as kids. And um, as we, you know, we're driving around and, and running errands and stuff and we're driving to and from church and everything, we would be hearing things because I have three little sisters and we would be matching what we heard. And it started with me singing, you know, what I heard. I would sing lead and sometimes harmonies. And then my sisters would kind of sing in so we all kind of just were singing. My mom was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So then it started with me. They handed me a microphone and I was singing little, you know, gospel songs. And, and it wasn't like Mary Had a Little Lamb. It was Danny Bell Hall. And it was, <laughs> you know, Real Vanessa deal, Armstrong, yeah. right. Yeah. So I'm singing, I'm singing. And then my sisters, um, I don't know how they got into it, but they were on too. So after a while, it was the four of us. And we were kind of the mini Jackson five of our little town, <laughs> the little girl Jackson five. And we went all around to all these churches doing, you know, midnight musicals and Sunday afternoon services and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, it just kind of ballooned from there. And as we grew up and, you know, grew out and went through high school and junior high and all that stuff, just kind of got more. I started becoming, you know, a, a choir director as well. I started uh, with my own praise team. Um, by the time I left church, I was preaching and counting money and holding babies and doing the whole thing. So definitely a church kid, which is why I think I'm so far from it now, Lord Jesus. But um, it was very small. I don't think we even realized what was happening. I really don't. We just kind of, oh, well, here's a microphone. All right, here we go. I <laughs> just kind of looked up when we were singing. So I think, I think it. also, too, the fact that you mentioned that you go back so many, your family goes back so many generations of having singers, they may have already known before y'all knew that, okay, well, this is what we do. Like you Exactly. Said. This is our thing. Because right. my mom sings with her, or used to sing with her sisters as well as a little group. They were the six of them. And they would do the exact same thing, going around to midnight musicals and afternoon services and all kind of stuff like that. So we kind of looked at them and we're like, wow. And then we looked up and we were doing it too. So now they're looking at y'all saying, wow. Yeah. Real, real, <laughs> they are. Real, sing, real singers are born. And I remember when I first came across you, you know, I'm, I'm a Layla Hathaway fan. I was just oh, watching some stuff on her. Me too. And, and she did this thing one day and she just say, just gave some shine to her background singer. So y'all come out front and do. And when you came out, you sung Summertime, you sung some other things too. And I was like, like <laughs> hold on, wait a minute, like, what's going, who is this, you know, and, and what stood out to me the most about you was your vocal range, you know, th just that ability to go super, super high, but also to go super, super low, and uh -huh. the only people I knew that could do that just was, it reminded me like the female version of Prince or something like, you know, ah. <laughs> low. and um, how did your journey start in terms of linking up with those, um, 
big name artists and you ended up just singing background with them? Um, it was interesting because with Layla specifically, I auditioned for her and didn't make it. <laughs> her MD called me, right? Her MD called me and was like, uh, you're incredible, but you sound too much like her. And I was like, that's my job. That's what I do. I was like, if you call me next week, I'll be singing with Shaka Khan. I'll sound like her. You call me next week, I'll be singing like Mary J. Blige. I match the sound of whoever I'm singing for because people pay their money to hear them. Right. They don't want to hear me. I'm supposed to match the backgrounds that are on their record, which are usually done by them. Yeah. So I'm like, I, that's my job. <laughs> I'm supposed to sound like them. Now, when they do give me a solo or something and say stand out, then okay. But my job is to sound like them or at least match their their tone. So it's kind of like a nice, you know, um, a, a cushion or like a bed for them to, you know, to either rest on or to spring from. So I'm like, that's what I do. So I was like, yeah, but you're you're great. Thank you for coming. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. But um, but they, they she told me later that she was like because she was actually there at the audition, and she said there were too many good people. She's like I couldn't pick then because it was me and a, all a bunch of my female colleagues, probably about seven or eight of us, all shooting for the same job, and so we were. She was like um, uh, 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 I don't know, <laughs> so she got a little overwhelmed I think, and I think that's what happened. But then later on. Um, Rasan Patterson and she were doing a tour together, a little mini tour. And it was her job to get the band and his job to get the singers. So he picked me because I was working for him at the time as well. And my friend, Jason Morales. Yeah. So then she was like, hey, I was like, hey, oh, <laughs> at that wow, first rehearsal. Wow. And meant it was really be. cool. Meant, meant to be. be. Yeah. Meant to you know, be. And, and I remember Rashawn Patterson from like he was he was on the kids show back in the days. Kids time. Incorporated. Right. Yep. And and he he had hair back then. Uh-huh. When, when I heard that name again, when I would watch y'all sing, I was like, why does that name sound familiar? So so that that's 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 a wonderful thing. So so later was your first one on on, a, on that level to get in with her that was the first time. no actually uh shaka khan was my first official gig that was my first official touring gig i was an alto and then a few years later i was pushed into soprano boy unwillingly i was like wait what wait wait no 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 i can't do that because <laughs> i didn't even think that high right. i hadn't thought that high for years because right. i had just come back from you know singing lead a little bit overseas and then um doing jazz. I studied jazz in college. So I was doing, you know, alto, contralto, kind of maybe some tenor stuff. And I would do some things every now and again, but like, I don't really have a falsetto so much. So I didn't really go up there unless I could do like loud, good shaka horn, you know, right. stuff like that. So people were like, okay, she's an alto. I'm like, hey, I'm okay with that. Yeah, 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 no but question. then they kind of switched about 2007, 2008. And they're like years around. I was like, no, oh, no, 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 because it's intense. Yeah, yeah. Prano for Shaka Khan is intense. Wow. But that was my first touring gig. From there, uh, before that, though, I actually met Rasan Patterson first. We got really close, really good friends. And I was like, listen, I know you get this all the time, but I promise you, I know every note of every song you have ever written. Yeah. And I love it, including backgrounds. Yeah. If you ever, ever need anybody, please call me. Yeah. And he did. Wow. And he did. And it, I proved it. <laughs> I was like, no, I do. I know every note of every song. Yeah. So I started working for him a lot. And then our paths crossed with that tour. But that was after I think I'd left. I've been on and off with Shaka Khan for about 15 years. Yeah. So that was after that little tour, mini tour with um, Rasan and Layla was after I'd left Shaka the first time. So yeah, it was, uh, it was kismet i think because yeah. i was so heartbroken i was like oh i wanted that gig so bad with layla yeah but you know and I, you just you just educated me on that yeah. because I, and i wonder did you tell the people who were in charge of auditions hey that's what i'm supposed to do is sound like and match the singer because that's that's some technical uh yeah. important information that it didn't seem like they even were aware of yeah i had to tell him later yeah. because as he was telling me that i was like that's the job. <laughs> That's what I do. I sound like every employer, whoever's name is on the bottom of my check right. or on the top of the marquee. That's what I'm sounding like because I'm not paid to sound like me. Right. right. I'm just not. I'm here because this person is famous and they need somebody to support them as they're doing their thing live. So 
my job is to sound like them. The wonderful Miss Tony Scruggs is with us, man. Already educating us, already dropping <laughs> on the teachers. Who were some of the early influences of, of you that you listen? Who was the first singer that just, just blew your wig back and was like, whoa, I, I, I really want to do this? Oh, gospel all day. It was definitely, it's a tie between Daryl Coley and Vanessa Bell Armstrong. I was like, oh, <laughs> because I was into jazz a lot. Well, I'll say actually Sarah Vaughn was my first because my father um, hit me to her at about 12 years old. We were watching PBS and he said, this is one of the best singers that ever walked the planet. And I was like, okay. So I listened, I was like, oh, because, you know, up to that point, I just heard, you know, gospel, a whole lot of hollering, a whole lot of sweating. I was like, there's got to be a better way. There has got to be a better way than this. <laughs> right. So this lady is standing there with the perfect posture, <laughs> with a little, you know, beads of sweat sort of kind of in her hair, just so. And she's doing this amazing, you know, uh, this, this vocal dexterity that I'd never heard and scatting and all this stuff. And I was like, I want to be her when I grow up. <laughs> That's it. That's the prototype. Wow. So after I kind of started studying her and then kind of branching out to studying more jazz people, I was like, there's got to be this in gospel. So then I moved to, you know, find out, discover Daryl Coley and Vanessa Bell Armstrong. And, but jazz has always been kind of my foundation, honestly, on top of gospel. Gospel and jazz are my foundation, but jazz was my heart because gospel I had to learn kind of, you know, for the job. And jazz just, it was the perfect combination of skill and emotion for me. Perfect combination. Wow. And it really, it gives you an intellectual uh, component to singing. So that's why I love it. Because you can actually study it. Right. I mean, everything else is pretty much feeling. Mm -hmm. How you feel, vibe, how, you know. But jazz, you have to study. Everybody can't do jazz. Wow. Everybody cannot do jazz, which is why I love Layla. Love Rasan because they both have that jazz. That's Chaka too. Most of my bosses have that jazz aspect. Yeah. But there's so much intellectual uh, of a, uh, and an intellectual component that goes into it that you can just study, right. and it can stimulate your mind. So it just <sighs> Sarah Vaughn, Sarah Vaughn, Daryl Coley, and Vanessa Bell Armstrong. So you have you have broken this thing down to a science. I and, did. And <laughs> What's interesting to me, as you were saying that, is I can recall watching you on stage scatting and doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's leads to my next question. Is that like um, just the equivalent of vocal improvisation? Do you yes. pre-plan it? So when you get up there, you just, whatever's coming out is what's coming out on the spot. Yep. Well, and usually, unfortunately, most of my favorite, you know, the, the ones that people love the most on YouTube, happened as a result of anger <laughs> oh, whoa, okay. people, because you know something went wrong but something huge like somebody forgot to order the, the dinner before it <laughs> or i wasn't paid for the last four gigs and i'm like yeah. oh my god right. i'm here again and i'm right. working I, uh, and it's the anger i think makes me just sing <laughs> i don't know why yeah. but i think it's the it's the energy it's not necessarily anger Right. I think I found a way to repurpose the energy so that I can use it in a positive way and I can, you know, get all my demons out and everybody has a good time. And I'm not like, you know, shooting up nobody or robbing a store. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, and and, and see that that's a uh, a testament to professionalism as well, yeah. because yeah, even when things are not going right behind the scenes, once you step on that stage and that audience is looking at you like that, they don't they know paid their money. They don't care about it. Yeah. They don't care what happened to me on the way. They don't care <laughs> that my foot hurts. They don't care that I have the flu and I might be dizzy and fall down. Yeah. They're like, I paid my money. Yeah. This where's the show? Yeah. So Absolutely. that's what and that's why I push through because it's not your fault. Yes. All the crap that I went through. So I you shouldn't have to pay for what I'm going through. So I always try to push through. For the audience and for the people that pay their money, if nothing else. And you, every time you spotlight it, the roof is blown off after. That. Every time. It's like, like, man, it's, it's unbelievable. Which leads me to asking you, have you ever had any um, uh, albums of your own or any aspirations to say, I'm going to go in the lab and, and start moving towards the forefront? Or are you content doing it? How are you doing? You know, the older I get, I think the more I lean towards doing it myself 
only because there's a, well, I don't want to say it that way. Uh, <laughs> how do I say this? Background singing isn't really a lifelong career. Um, they want you to do your job with the least amount of assistance possible. <laughs> so um, it's not something where they're going to try to pay you a top dollar or make sure that they take care of you, put you in the best hotels. It's something that's kind of a training ground for young up and coming people. So at some point, people do age out of singing background. And I think I'm getting to that point where I'm like, you know, I just, this is too hard. And then the traveling is hard, spending, you know, maybe 80 hours in a city, <laughs> maybe sometimes, well, shoot, 60 hours, sometimes not even 72 to do a gig. And I mean, you're flying there six hours, you're flying back six hours, that's 12 hours out of the 72, 60 to 72 hours that you're doing it. So it's hard, people don't realize. And they're not great flights. They're not flights that leave at 2 p.m. and get you there at six, yeah. one shot. Yeah. They're usually the cheapest flight that is entirely possible. Layovers. And, exactly, yeah, like, plural yeah. layovers. Yeah, yeah. And flights that leave at five, six, seven o'clock in the morning. Right. So you'll leave, you know, I was leaving from my um, chosen ho uh, airport that flight left at 7 a.m. and I had a layover. <laughs> I had a layover in Arizona. Right. So I didn't even get to get good sleep before I got the layover. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's an hour flight, a two or three hour layover in Arizona, and then another four or five hour leg on the way out. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, you know, if you don't leave at seven, because that'll put you there at a decent amount of time. Uh, but if you leave later, you're getting in at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Sometimes things are closed. Sometimes they have you in a hotel that has nothing around it. So you can't find food. You can't go get a toothbrush if you left it at home. And then the next day, one day you spent all day traveling. The next day you spend all day at the job. You do sound check. Yeah, you're, you're eating there, eating breakfast there sometimes, sometimes lunch. Um, sometimes it's provided, sometimes it isn't. You do sound check. Uh, you run back. <laughs> you do all of your hair and makeup. You run back, you do the whole show, it's 11 o'clock. You spent the entire day at the venue right. and your flight leaves at six o'clock the next day. Man. Look, these, <laughs> are, these are the sides of the industry that are not glamorous. Exactly. When, when young people are sitting around saying, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. That's the side. You sure? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You That's sure about that? They don't it's see. not sexy. It's not as sexy as you think. Not and they're not putting you in first class. They're not putting you in business class. Yeah. They're putting you in the cheapest seat they can find most of the time. Right. Um, so you have to hope that you have frequent flyer miles so you can get a decent seat. I like the window. So that is always the first thing that I try to get is the window. Sometimes you can't get it. Right. Sometimes you are in the middle seat and there's nothing you can do. Uh, yeah. Oh, honey. Yeah. So it really, it's really um, imperative that you try to work for somebody that really wants to take care of their team. Absolutely. It's imperative. Absolutely. Yeah. Tony Scruggs educating us, educating us for the so that would that's some of the things that are leading you more towards maybe saying, I want to I want to do it myself. Yeah. yeah. That would be incredible. I think the world is really missing out because they don't y'all don't know what I know. I mean, <laughs> this sister is fantastic. I mean, she's Thank one of you. the greatest singers that I've ever heard, you know, in my life. Um just this wow. her, her abilities are or endless. What's it like? Because a lot of artists come into the game, and I mean people who have been out in the forefront, but over time, the industry, the business side that we were just touching on, it starts to make them lose love mm. of the actual art. How, yeah. how how is it describe how it is to try to navigate and balance between doing this what I love that I never even thought about from a business side that once you get in the industry. I gotta still maintain that love while dealing with these snakes and the oh. corruption that exists in the game. So the way that you don't deal with snakes is that you ask around. You ask around, you do gigs by recommendation or by suggestion. Um, I definitely tell people to do their research though, because if no one that you've ever met in your entire life and in your entire career has ever worked with the person 
that you has approached you to sing with or sing with them, you should not do it. And we're not talking about the artist, right. not the artist. I'm talking about the musical director, right. because the musical director has the most effect on what you're going to be producing and what you're um, what you're going to be doing as a uh, as a singer and a performer. Right. So you have to ask around and see exactly what their leading style is, what their leadership style is. Um, are they tyrants? Are they unreasonable? Are they, you know, are they understanding? Mm. Because you need understanding because so many things can go wrong. Mm. So many things. Mm. Um, but <clears throat> to balance that love, to, uh, to make sure that you're not getting screwed over, it's a lot of uh, research. You have to do research. You do. You have to figure out who you're working for, the big name, who you're working for middle management, which is like what I like to call, you know, musical directors and tour managers, middle management, the middle management. So figure out who that is. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to be in it for love of the game because there are so many factors, so many things, so many variables that are there to almost challenge you and keep you from doing your job. <laughs> so you have to be in it for love of the game. And you have to do, I would say, uh, the only loyalty that you have is to the dollar. <laughs> there is no loyalty in Hollywood. There is no loyalty in music. There is no loyalty. So if your employer is asking you to be loyal and only to them, say, thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> no, thank you. Because the only reason that I'm surviving and have survived to do this interview today is because I have always juggled several several right. artists and several different streams and different areas of singing because on top of my life I also as you mentioned I do studio work because I'm also a reading singer right. so I do session work that has sustained my entire life yeah. especially through COVID yeah. so good old union work I get my benefits so my skin is good my teeth are good that's why <laughs> everything's well okay because <laughs> I have benefits through the union right. so if you can make sure that you are getting to the highest level you can. So you can be in the union and have several different ways of singing because that also keeps me happy. And it challenges me because reading is not easy, not easy at all. Yeah. So being able to go into a session and just you know read music down keeps me sharp, uh, keeps me happy and it keeps my pitch in tune. It keeps my, you know, keeps my, my instrument sharp. Right. So that also, you know, helps me stay happy because I'm, you know, working on my craft. I'm becoming a better singer and uh, coupled with, you know, good old road singing because road is hard. The, the problem is getting to stage and leaving stage, but right. on stage is probably the most Zen moment you'll ever right. have. Absolutely. It's very Zen. Absolutely. So the combination of singing on the stage and doing session work is just absolute bliss for me. <laughs> so always always try to have as many irons in the fire as humanly possible because sometimes you know artists especially you know you won't see your artist for two years right, right. what happened to their band right, right 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 so you have to make sure that you can survive yeah. you can eat because in that time that the artist is not working they're not thinking about you come on they're not so you have to have as many things going as humanly possible at all times, at all times. And that will make you happier. That'll keep you eating. <laughs> Several things that'll do for you. So basically, you are showing and proving to me right now that you are a musical scholar. Yes, I am. <laughs> like, yes, I am. Gosh, I worked hard. This thing down to a science, man. I worked hard, very hard. Yeah. Tony Scruggs is in the building. We we just got we got a couple more. We ain't gonna hold you long, Queen. We appreciate mm. you. Um, so I want I want to go back to to the to the union part, but I'll come back mm. to that. Okay. What is what is it like to be respected by the greats in the industry like you are? Because you know your name may not be a household name to the average person that just walked, but when you when the other greats hear your name. What's that like knowing that you know and they know, oh no, this 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 woman is the truth. It's surreal. Hmm. It is so surreal because I remember being, you know, 13, 14. I remember studying all these people, and now I can call most of them friends. 
Most of them know me by my first name. They have my number. They text me. I can text them. Wow. Whenever they see me, it's all love. They want to hug. And it's not on no Hollywood crap either. Because I'm not, if you ask it, you can look at me and tell I'm not Hollywood. I know. I know humility. Well, I'm always comfortable first. Right. I'm comfortable first. But I'm not that person that's looking for validation from outside. I'm not looking for recognition from celebrities. Yeah. I'm literally looking to do a great job and I want to get my check and go home. So when I actually make a connection with a celebrity, it's a real connection. It's not some, oh my God, they're my friend. I'm going to call them. You want you to meet my friend? Right, right, right. It's like, hey girl, I'm in town. You want to get a hamburger? <laughs> yeah, girl, let's get a hamburger. Yeah. So it's surreal. And I still have to kind of pinch myself. I think I was on a tour bus uh, two, three years ago with Shaka. We were doing a tour with Michael McDonald. And she was standing at the kitchen making something. And she was in this beautiful, like just a it's very simple um, uh, t-shirt, not t-shirt, a button down shirt dress, a black shirt dress went all the way to the floor. And this bracelet she had on was just gleaming. <laughs> it was the only piece she was wearing. And she had her, you know, signature Shaka hair. Yeah. So I'm looking at her from behind. And I'm like, that's Shaka Khan. Wow. Oh my God. Right. <laughs> she turned around and was like, you want some of this, baby? I said, uh -huh. <laughs> it was just so real, but right. it was surreal. And it's everybody. I mean, Patty LaBelle is a wonderful friend of mine. Uh, um, and she, every time I see her, she just, oh, baby, baby, come <laughs> in. But you're not Tony. You're not Tony. That's a Tony. You're not Tony. Because like, the first time we met, I actually was standing in for her. Or maybe it was her or something. No, it was her. Because I that was kind of my claim to fame is that I stand in for a lot of the um, award shows and and uh, I actually stand in for Shaka too for their sound checks. Right. So they don't have to come down, you know, so right. they're busy. Right. So they don't need to come down and sing the song. Right. They know we right. rehearsing for the band. They already know they song. Right. So I'm the guy that kind of comes in and and, uh, and does, stands in for the people because it's, you know, I know their songs. Yeah. And I think she came in one time as I was singing If Only You Knew. And she was like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> so she made her way up to the stage and as soon as I was done, she ran out and uh, hugged me so tight and was so sweet. And her MD was playing keys. He was like, girl, you sang that song. I said, thank you so much. This is so huge. And so many things like that. Then that's, you know, that starts the conversation because usually they're, you know, excited that somebody sang your song right. Because that's my thing, too, is I learn it exactly how they sung it because of It was a hit. Why would I change it? So I sing it exactly how they did it on the record, verbatim, note for note, straight to the end. Yeah. So first of all, they hug me because they're like, thank you. <laughs> you sang my song correctly. I'm like, Mother, I'm, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. I sang it correctly. Yeah. But after that, usually if, if there's a genuine component to the artist, they usually are like, so tell me, where are you from? What do you do? How do uh, what is happening? Who are you? Right. And they want to get to know me. So it's nice. It's a genuine connection. So I have a genuine connection with a lot of people in the industry that are household names. And it's surreal. And I'm so honored and blessed and grateful that I have such a connection with people who just happen to be international, <laughs> amazing Icon. artists, icons. You know, great, greatness respects greatness. And Thank that, you. That's what it boils down to, you know. Yeah. If your if your skill level wasn't where it was, then of course they wouldn't be. But that feeling that strikes you when you hear those notes, you know, and it resonates with you. That that hits the greats the same way it hits people like me who can't see. It the really does. Yeah. People don't realize they are just as moved right. by all kind of music. Right. Let's know. Sometimes not even their own. They're like, "Child, I want to hear that again." Yeah, right, right. I don't want to hear that stuff again. I hear that all the night. I every night. I hear it all the time. I don't want to hear my music at all. Yeah. But some of them, they really are. They're real musicians to the heart. Shaka is a real yeah. musician. Right. There are things to this day, and sometimes people can catch me going, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where did that even come from? How do you even think like that right. to this day? Right. I've been working with her off and on for 15 wow. years. Wow. And it's just, I'm still blown away by her. Mm -hmm. But most of my artists, same things. Most of my employers, I'm like, right. Right. Layla was a masterclass. I did not sing like this. Right. I did not sing like this until I worked with Layla. Wow. wow. I learned a lot wow. from working with her, a lot.
She's an incredible musician. And that's musician. I really, I say, call people who are at that level vocal musicians. Right. Because everybody wants to be a singer. Everybody's a singer. I sing, I sing, I'm a singer. Right. Okay. Right. I'll give you that. Right. There is another level though. And one person I forgot to mention who is also a huge, huge um, influence on me was Rochelle Farrell. Oh, yeah. And she's another one that I can call a friend who I can text her if I need her. She's like, Chella, write you a song. I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I have a friend of mine right now who's like, you owe Rochelle Farrell about 27% of every check that you make because you stole a good chunk from her. I'm like, you right and shut up. <laughs> right, right. And shut up because yeah, yeah. I literally everything Everything that I that came out of hers, I was at the record store getting it and listening to it like this. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want to hear anything else. Right. I didn't want to sing anything. I just wanted to listen. Yeah. And I wanted to be in that. So like in my car would be, you know, Rochelle for and I would wear CDs and tapes down. Wow. Wow. The tape tape would pop yeah. the CD would yeah. scratch. Yeah. I would just wear things, I mean, over and over and over again and I wanted to form my mouth like her and say my vowels like her and make all and approach everything now she is her range is out of this world Jeez. especially the top end the top end I cannot touch right. but like I, I every word there's a few though her Layla um Shaka Rasan, yeah. an artist called Kurt Elling a lot of people Bilal I love but even more uh Ann Wilson from Heart Okay. Um, Fleetwood Mac. I love, love, love so many people, so many people that I just studied. Like, yeah, I must. And then, of course, jazz, but that list is epically long. <laughs> yeah. Sarah Vaughn, Carmen McRae, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, Frank Sinatra, right. Mel Torme. I live, love, love, love jazz. And that's just the singers. Because on top of that, I love instrumentalists too. And you love music because you I do. you all over the spectrum with the artists. All that you name, you know, over. Styles of singing, you know. But yeah. And, and I've seen you just do different songs and you, you sing songs I never heard before. I'm like, who is that? You know, because you don't just put yourself in a, in a box of I'm only going to sing this way or that way. And I mm -hmm. think that's what contributes to your success in terms of being able to keep working too. Yeah. Because any of those people that you name that are still around, I'm certain that they could call you and say, come step in and you could step yeah. in a yes, chameleon and become way. Hey, I gotta be, I can be who I need to be. Yep, they sure could. I they got sure a question could. for you real quick. Um, now, I always ask this question, if you did, if you were never born with the gift of being able to sing like you, what would you be doing? Would you have any other interests that if I could oh. sing, what would I be doing? So many other interests. And I tried them all before I sang. Yeah. <laughs> People don't realize. I had a whole life before I started singing, whole different life. I sang for church, of course. That was, you know, on the weekends and then rehearsals during the week. I was trying to do everything else. I was trying all of it. I was like, okay, there's got to be some other way because I really burned out. By the time I got to college, I burned out. They had me singing all day, every day at church. I was singing everything. I was directing choirs. There were some days where I would not sit down. If there were people singing, I was involved. So it would go from... Uh, you know, the first the testimonial service, you'd sing during testimonial service, sing during prayer, sing during praise and worship. And then they would have the youth choir come up. Oh no, the junior choir, the junior choir come up. I directed the junior choir. Okay. Junior choir would sit down. The youth choir would come up. I sang in the youth choir or directed or led. And then this youth choir would sit down and then I would get up with the senior choir and I would be a section leader in the senior choir uh, soprano section. Right. I was burned out. So I tried everything else. I was, I'm still a gamer to this day. I play video games online. Okay. Um, I still type 80 words a minute because I was an executive assistant uh, for many, many years. I started in 2006 with Shaka. Before that, I had to make a choice yeah. between working at a company for a CEO, CFO, and, and uh, a, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, executive uh, president of a company in Santa Monica. Right. So I had to choose between tour with Shaka Khan or being like super executive assistant. So I'm like, okay, so I can still type 80 words a minute. Right. Um, I wanted to do uh, be a psychologist for a long time. Yeah. Um, 
I wanted to do everything else but singing because I was so burned right, out. Right, right. But then I stopped singing completely yeah. in college. And I was completely depressed. I couldn't do anything. I was like, so what is it? And I didn't go to church either because I was like, I'm burned out right. whole freshman year. But freshman year, I could not get out of my bed. Right. I was like, okay, what is it? Is it church that I'm missing or is it singing? All right. So maybe it's singing. So then a friend of mine who I call affectionately my big little brother, because he's about two or three years older than me, but he acts like he's 10 years younger. <laughs> he came into my, uh, my dorm room one day and he said, you got good music here. I was like, who are you? How did you get in my room? <laughs> because my door was open. He just walked in straight to my CDs. Right. Pretty good. Yeah. Was, <laughs> I was like, hi, what's yeah. your name? <laughs> right, right, right. But he told me about this vocal jazz choir that was at our school. And he was like, I think you should get in. He's like, because you got this music. You got you to gotta be able to sing or something. I was like, hey, we'll see. Right. So I auditioned and then I did that for about four years. I loved, it just stretched everything. And it put everything that I'd learned into perspective and it applied it, right. which was amazing. And then on top of that, she treated us like working musicians. Right. She's like, you come in here knowing the music. I will help you mold it and shape it and, you know, make it into a, an a, incredible performance, but you have to do your homework at home. So she created the musician that I am, Miss Julie Adams. She's still here. She doesn't teach anymore. Yeah. But uh, she made the musician and the, the thinking, functioning professional that you see every, every night is shout because out, of her. Shout out to Miss Julie. And shout, Julie out to, Adams. shout out to the dude that just randomly walked in. Yes, <laughs> Peter Potter. That's my big little brother. It's all good. Before we yeah. go, you said something about, about a union. So is there yeah. like a, a some type of, music union or singers union that you're referring to that yes. educate because young artists may not know about that and they may need to be involved in something like that yes there is so actually recently the singers union merged with the actors union mm. so it's it used to be aftra uh, i forget what that stood for but that was the singer musician side and they took care of singers and then there was sag uh which i forget what that stands for too screen, screen actors screen guild. actors guild right so you have it's right on the tip of my tongue too, the American Federation of, I don't know, something. But now it's called SAG-AFTRA. Okay. And um, it is in charge of making sure that all singers, musicians, anybody performing on the, the screen that we see is getting at least the minimum payment that is established by the union. Um, whoever hires us through this union has to pay into our retirement and to our benefits. Wow. as well as paying us and we get residuals so that every time anybody views this performance that we did on television or movies we're paid for it and this is everybody in the production crew the people you don't see uh musicians singers actors uh, writers uh directors uh, grips all those people and they i don't know if they're all covered by the same union but they all have their own union and this union is to make sure that nobody's getting below a certain amount everybody's getting their benefits everybody's getting their retirement payments and their residuals wow. so it's a beautiful thing because baby once you know live music you sing one time you get paid one time right. that's it with sag and a sag after with union work you get paid you get checks all right. the time right you get checks all the time because you get paid every time. Now, it might not be that much. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going right. to tell you right now. Right. I right. get 11 cent checks. I get two hey. cent checks. Hey. I'm like, y'all could have kept that pity check. <laughs> I don't need it. It costs you more to send me this paper yeah. than it was actually was in the envelope. Yeah. But it's something. It's something. Yeah. And it literally, people will tell you it'll keep you alive. Yeah. Because yeah. checks are coming. You don't know when they're coming. They right. just keep coming. Right. So you'll look up and you'll be like, Jesus, I have a hundred dollar bill due today. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And a union residual check will come in Man, come on, come on. and you're saved. Come so on. I tell people, even if you are not, you know, even if you don't think you're going to do singing or if you, you know, you don't know if you're going to do a uh, TV movie singing, you don't know how to get into it. Once they approach you to get your card, get your card, get your because card. You can still, you know, work union gigs without your card. They'll give you a little grace period, maybe six months to a year, where you just get that money and they're paying into your retirement and your benefits. Right. But you don't get the benefit of that money if you don't have your card. 
But at some point they'll approach you and say, do you want to get your card? And you can pay it full out or you can pay payments. It's kind of expensive. Right, right. Last time I heard it was about $3,300. Right. So it's that $3,000 is a lot. But what they do for you is so wonderful. Right. It's so important because you really, it into your old age. Right. There are people right now, I have people in my sessions that are 75, 80 years old. Okay. Their brain is still there. Their instrument right. is still there. The union is taking care of them. Right. They have benefits, they are getting residual checks, and they're able to survive right. because they have those checks coming in all the time. So the union, I'm a union girl. Hey, Amen. I know that's right. Girl. Hey, that's yeah. right. Well, Miss Tony, I thank you so much for taking this time out and coming. I'm, I'm a fan. I've been a fan for a long time. So I was like, oh, I, I got to reach out. I got to get Tony. But um, <laughs> I thank you so much. And I'm going to continue to follow. If y'all are not familiar with this sister, go on YouTube. And just type in a name and, and you're going <laughs> to see what I'm talking about. Um, any social media, anything you want to let people know you got coming up, let us know. Oh, so Book much. Anything. <laughs> so much. Miss um, Shaka is going back on the road in the fall. So if you see us in your town, come see me. I'd love to see you. Um, I'm always doing stuff. Uh, if you look on my website, which is where everything is, www.tonyscruggs.com, T-O-N-I-S-C-R-U-G-G-S.com. Everything that I've ever done <laughs> almost is on there. I just updated it and it'll go back to my first gigs, my first union gigs, my uh, my first live gigs. And there's some videos there. Wow. Um, there's even some things that people don't know about um, as far as uh, the stuff that I've done with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Oh. As a result of working with Shaka Khan on her record, her funk this record, yeah. I worked with them for a long time. So I'm on Patti LaBelle's Christmas record. I'm on Ron Isley's Christmas record around the same time, I think 2008. And I actually got to sing a duet with Ron Isley. Oh, Not wow. in the same room. <laughs> it don't matter. It don't it matter. Don't matter. <laughs> but it, um, what Can I Buy You, I think, it was a Christmas song that he wrote. And I got to be the girl on that song. Oh, really? It's just all kind of little fun stuff, you know, a little information. And one of the games that I play, Second Life, um, there are little pictures of my avatar there. And I think I might have performances there. I can't recall. But on my SoundCloud, I definitely have uh, audio performances from right. Second Life, so you can kind of see what I do in my spare time on occasion. Come on, uh, my little video game, and I try to make her look like me, but she's me at my fighting weight <laughs> <laughs> with all my hair. You know, you know. Yeah. That's all right, Queen. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> you, are, you, I don't see. I don't understand how it's enough hours in a day for you. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm me all. neither. Oh, I need more hours. I need more hours. We make it happen. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I'm again. I'm honored. I'm honored, and we wish you nothing but the, the highest levels of success. Oh, thank and, you. Um, nothing but love, Queen. Thank you so much. You're too kind. This has been so fun. Oh, uh, anytime. Love to get you back sometime. Absolutely, my. I would love to. All right. Thank you, Queen. Thank Let's you. Tony Scruggs. <laughs> Bye.